Yes. Yes. Oh, oh yes. my. <laughs> oh, God. Disaster struck. Let the man cook. <laughs> Let him cook. Look at that venter. <laughs> Look at this god boss. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome to Windy London. Don't worry, I'm about to board the plane to Malaysia, as I mentioned in the last video. Gonna be spending three weeks there traveling with some friends. Cass is not gonna be there though. I'm about to say goodbye to her and she'll be joining me in Thailand in three weeks time. But so much exciting stuff to come. Got a long journey ahead of me though, but I'll catch up with you when it's done or during it. Let's go. All right, after 30 plus hours of travel, we just touched down in KL. Steven's here in the background. It is one of the most traumatizing journeys of my entire life. I'm not gonna go into too many. Harry's here as well. We got the boys back together. Yeah, let's not go into the traumatizing journey. I'm just happy to be here. I need to get out these sweaty clothes and I need to sleep. All right, it is a new day. I got a good night's sleep and we are about to make our way to the Cameron Highlands. I got really excited, put on my favorite herping trousers and Bruh, look bruh. at this, look at this shit, bruh. Stripeys. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna need to be changed. I'm so mad about that. Currently on the hunt for some rubber boots. Arrived in some mall up in the Cameron Highlands. A lot of new built things here. There's a McDonald's and a mall here, but we're heading to Mr. DIY and also for a very important piece of equipment as well as the boots. <laughs> look at this god boss. <laughs> Look at this compost. <laughs> All right, very last bullshit vlog entry before we enter the forest properly. This time we're in the, well, it doesn't really look like a boss court from this angle, but there you go. Getting the cheese nut in, I'll see you in a second. Harry and I have picked up these extra units of mobility. Oh, look, you can see Harry in the reflection of the thing. Wave to the camera. Oh. <laughs> Excited? Yeah. Get some lifers? Yeah. Get some nice mountain species. True mountain species. The weather tonight is pretty grey and overcast. There's a light drizzle right now, which um, definitely has potential to increase to a downpour. Um, that can bring snakes out or it can make snakes hide away. It's also quite cold, but I don't think it's too cold for there not to be snakes active. So I'm optimistic we can get my first snake of the year tonight in before I get skunked. Oh, I've detected a boy. Look at looketh upon him gaze upon his majesty it's not even dark out and this cute little this spitz yes it's a shrew oh where'd he go come back here he goes mr spitz and look well just chilling here oh, spotted a uh, first first live reptile of 2023 malaya drakum robinson eye there you go. Here's one of the more dull Malaya Dracon Robinson I or Robinson's, what is it? Robinson's angle-headed lizard, Malayan mountain agama. One of the more dull ones I've ever seen. Kind of surprising, almost as if it's in stress coloration, but it was just going to rest, so I don't know why that is. All right, night's just begun, and look what Harry has. Let the man cook. <laughs> Let him cook. He's got a beautiful golden macrocalamus shell's eye in there. I'll get it out and we can take a closer look. Hello. Chonky one. And here you have it, guys. The very first snake of 2020, 23 is this beautiful, absolutely golden to the maximum Macrocalamus emas. I mean, this is a species we saw last time we were here back in September, but that one was nothing compared to this beauty. And this one's about double the size. I mean, it's got the really pronounced uh, yellow bars on the neck and just the body is just absolutely incredible like i know a lot of people aren't fond of reed snakes but i guarantee this this is a reed snake for the ages some would say as i've mentioned in the last video this species is not necessarily rare up in the cameron highlands but in my opinion it's the hardest of the macrocalamus of the reed snakes to target here this one just kind of shows up randomly crossing roads and such when you're lucky and that's exactly how it happened tonight and we are very lucky to see this absolutely stunning snake what a way to start the year off we're going to keep moving because it's prime time see if we can find something else all right not even 10 minutes after that shoals eye harry just radioed in saying he got one of our targets let the man cook boys he's coming my way so let's see what he's found all right let the man cook he's brought the goods to us again <laughs> harry's on a roll man 
and apparently he's got a target and which must be one of the rare species if you got one of the rare species this early on the trip we are i smell some musk it's kind of weighty let's see what it is you gotta tip it out for the camera you can't tip it look, out for the camera look, man look. tip it out for the camera come on all right it's kind of big Oh. Let's see what it is then. Oh, oh yes! my! <laughs> yes, Latis Sinctus! Yes. Oh my god. Holy shit. My first ever properly live Oreo Cryptophis Porphyraceus Latis Sinctus. And it's spiky too. In the wild. Exactly what you want to get out at this time of night for. I mean, nice. it's not the most red snake I've ever seen, but hold on, let's get a, <laughs> let's get a in hand of that. That thing is. Oh wow. Oh. <laughs> These have the smallest teeth. It's actually like quite comical when they bite you. They're so... Steven, do you mind turning your light off? It's just glaring me a bit. Look at that, guys. First night here and we got one of the rarest highland snakes in Peninsula Malaysia. It's not like, it's not like they're super rare here, but a lot of people come here to look for them and they are very, very rarely seen. So much rarer than they are in Thailand, at least. And that thing is just absolutely gorgeous look at the contrast against my hand incredible snake with yeah like i said it like even one this big a snake this big would usually draw a substantial amount of blood biting but this one doesn't even like break my skin so it's really quite funny amazing what a find to start night you're on a roll boss yep all right as soon as i turned the camera off it went into like an absolutely beautiful pose on my hand look at that thing i love this like irregular bar it has towards the like middle of the frame right now. And look at that head. Such an incredible snake to see here in the Cameron Highlands. Not one I was expecting us to see whatsoever. I said to the guys before this trip, we said, if we get one, and I listed about six or seven of rare species here, that is a trip complete and already we're just killing it. So let's put this one away, take some pictures of it later and see if we can catch some more snakes for now. All right, finally got a more adult, not quite full adult, but a sort of, larger adult Maleo Dracon. Um, looking nice and pretty here, sleeping in situ. Not too bothered by my presence. Looking a bit cortisol ridden, but uh, no worries. I'm not gonna touch you. Oh, he blinked. Oh, the rain has returned in force and put a bit of a dampener on things. Hopefully it eases off, but oh, it's getting worse by the second. I hate this. Ah, oh, after a little break of about two hours, we got our third species of the night, Aspenodipsis lasgalanensis, just chilling up here. You know how these are, kind of common up here in these highlands, something we're expecting to see tonight, especially with the damp weather. Let's get him down and take a closer look. Okay, there you go. You have it in Stephen's hand. This is a species we saw last time we were here, but one I'm always happy to see because it's so kind of iconic to these highlands, named after the mossy, the Mirkwood Forest and Lord of the Rings. And uh, I don't know, it's hard to see right now, but you can see it's got those bright red eyes, those kind of blood red eyes. Quite a nice distinctive feature of it, along with that really defined like hexagonal ridge of scales or ridge of hexagonal scales, I should say. Yeah, not gonna spend too long with this one because uh, we wanna get on and see if we can find any more snakes tonight, but it's a lifer for Harry and uh, our third species of the night, which I'd say is pretty much par for Cameron Highlands. Three species in a night is good. And uh, for the species we got tonight, I'm very, very happy. And hopefully we can get, uh, I'm hoping we can get one more at least. Maybe Loris. Yes, Harry, inspecting. Smell it. No, I can smell it, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't mention this. It, it all went down off camera, but this is one of the stinkiest snakes ever. It's actually foul. No, I'm most interested in its body shape. Like, obviously it's got that strong ridge, but it's not like, I mean, the only Esphenodipsis I'm familiar with is Malacanus, which is like a short, thick kind of slug snake. Yeah, this one's long and, and slender. This is long. Like, that's so um, laterally compressed. It's incredible. All right, we finally got up to the very high elevations and I just flipped under this rock here, a very predictable snake. This is our one we saw every night we came up here in the last video, uh, that is uh, back in September. Macrocalamus emas, the golden bellied reed snake. Um, not the most uh, visually impressive species from above, but you see beneath it has this awesome yellow or golden stripe on the venter. And uh, this species is uh, pretty range restricted, only found in some very, very high altitude spots in Peninsula Malaysia. And uh, this one's actually quite huge for the species. This is probably one of the largest ones of the species I have ever seen. 
and uh, it's good to find one when I'm in slightly higher spirits, a bit more awake than uh, in the previous videos, but it's still raining. I'm getting water on my lens, so I'm going to let this guy go, and uh, maybe we can find a fifth species tonight. You never know. Nebularis is still missing from our species count. The rain's returned, and it's so cold up here, so I think that Macrocalamus emas will probably be the last snake of the night. Actually, Harry found one himself, but we, uh, since we already had one, uh, he just released it, and I didn't film it. But yeah, heading back to the car now, there's a chance we could see something on the way back to the car slash bikes, but uh, I'd say it's unlikely in this weather. So I'll either catch you tomorrow or in a few minutes. Ah, shit. As soon as it starts getting dark, the rain has, oh, it's returned in force. Hell no. All right, the rain's eased off, but I went out in the car this time because it looked like there was a major threat of rain. I did not want to get caught in it. And it's freezing tonight. It's like already 17 degrees, which is not a good sign, but uh, you know, you know, the rain stopped and uh, that could mean that there are some snakes moving. Steve and I are about to get out the car and do some walking, so fingers crossed. All right, first reptile of the night is again uh, Malayo Dracon Robinsoni, but this time an absolutely stunning juvenile one. These juveniles have such an intense green. That thing is just absolutely beautiful. I'm probably going to leave it here and then grab my camera out in a minute to take a picture because that thing is awesome and in such a good spot for photography too. Stephen just spotted this uh, Phyllautus vermiculatus this time. So similar to the frog from last night, just a bit different. And this one is molting and eating its own skin. It's not super obvious, but yeah, uh, yellow between the hind legs as well. Interesting behavior we're watching right here. Some strange, fro <laughs> some strange froggy activity. Oh man, we've been out for over two hours now and We've seen zero snakes. This has really not been my day. And uh, to boot, it's absolutely freezing. I'm freezing my nuts off in this weather. And I just came from winter Britain and I'm still this cold, which shows you it's like 16 degrees Celsius, rainy and hum- Oh man, it's tough, boys, it's tough. Oh, at last, just like a minute after I filmed that last sequence complaining, luck has changed. Check it out. Down there is the first ever Macrocalamus tweedii on this channel. This is a species we were really hoping to see here. I haven't seen one of these for so many years, not since 2018. Hold on, let me turn on my filming light. There we go. Some nice kind of softer lighting here for you to observe this species. Another Macrocalamus, another mountain endemic reef snake. This one exclusively endemic to the Cameron Highlands. And we saw one DOR on this path before. This is the path where we got the Shoal's Eye and the Oreo Cryptophis yesterday. And I'm glad this seems to be a spot where they're reliable and much lower elevation than I'm used to seeing them. I used to think they were only at the very high elevations, but they're actually low down. This is probably the largest reed snake in Peninsula Malaysia. And let me show you the coolest part about it. Look at that venter. <laughs> So, so cool. From above, it does just look like a black, dark snake, but it's got that crazy, oh, hello. It's got that crazy black and yellow striking venter. Of course, like the other Macrocalamus species, I've never seen this one bite, but what it does do is continuously spike you with its tail. I don't know how well you can see there, but it's got like a, a sort of sharpened point to the tail and it really lets you have it with that. But yeah, never bites. Great to see this species, although you're not getting the best look right now. Um, Macrocalamus tweedii. I'm off the mark for tonight. Let's go. Ha, huh. all right. My luck really has changed. Check it out. Hiding up there, somewhat covered in and concealed in that bank is our first nebularis of the trip. I was wondering where these are. All right, there you go. I climbed the, climbed the bank and you can see it there, tucked in situ. Looking like it's in ambush actually, but also sheltering from the rain simultaneously. Um, sorry, but I'm gonna get you out, buddy. Oh God, disaster struck. The branch I used to get it out of there was covered in ants that I didn't realize. Halfway through pulling it out when I had my hand on its tail, realized my hand was absolutely covered in ants biting me. Just had to firm it and uh, safely get it to the ground, which I did. And luckily for me, Nebularis tends to be a very calm and placid species, at least in my experience. Probably something to do with it being so cold. They just don't have the energy to be striking and aggressively going at you. Um, right now it's not moving at all, but yeah, you can see really, really cool adult female Nebularis specimen right here. So much black between the scales. That's one of the things that really separates this species from Fakata slash Sabahai, which you get in the lower highland areas of Peninsula Malaysia. 
this one you get up in the montane cloud forest and it is a beautiful snake um you guys know me not the biggest fan of green vipers hold on let's get it moving I just want to have some activity sometimes filming a snake which is completely still wasn't the most fun thing ever but yeah you know me I'm not the biggest fan of green vipers when they have cool black on the body like this it's really cool and it's uh, lovely to see this big adult female here in the Cameron Highlands all right now the nebularis start showing up just got a second one this one pretty high up cruising along the top of this kind of uh would you call this kind of tree this this fern yeah this big uh, montane fern Obviously, it's very difficult to get down and I don't need it, so I'm going to leave it there. Seconds after that second Fakatus just arrived at this little pond here. Looked at the edge of the pond and there you go. Uh, the first Aspenodipsus lascalinensis, which I've spotted myself on this trip. Let's, uh, let's get a closer look because it's kind of tucked away there. Okay, I got it in hand now and this one I was very gentle catching because I did not want a repeat of yesterday's stink fest. So this one, not stressed at all, not smusking, and just sitting there looking absolutely beautiful in my hand. Asphenodipsis lascalinensis, the Mirkwood forest slug snake. Such a cool montane species, a real, um, a real special one for people who are just coming to the area. For me, I've become so blasé to these after coming to the Highlands for so many years. But whenever the new person comes here, like Harry this time, they're like, damn, that is a freaking cool snake, and it is. So unlike the other members of the Asphanodipsis genus, and it's so long and slender, it's almost more Boiga-like, especially when you look at it at this angle here. And just this one's got such an awesome reddish-orange eye. Really, really stunning individual. Um, cool find. We're racking up the numbers after a dismally slow start. We got the par three species, and um, hopefully we can add one more before this night ends. It's just after 11 now, and we're probably going to wrap up around midnight, so we got a bit of time. And in the same area, I just got this uh, Hemiphilodactylus species. It used to be Titiwangsaensis up here. I'm, I'm hoping that will still be the species, but it's like, uh, what are these called? Slender geckos, I think maybe the name for them. They're pretty slow moving compared to your average gecko, as you can see. Not too flighty, have the big claws on their hands. And uh, overall, they're pretty plain though. So I'm not gonna spend much time with this guy. I'm gonna grab a phone photo, then move on. Okay, well, that gecko is going to be the last find of the night because we wrapped up pretty early. A lot of us are tired, but there's time for one thing, and that's an ice cream review. I've already started opening it. This one's a La Primera Chocolate Fudge Sea Salted Caramel Brownie. It has all the, like, prospects to be a great ice cream. Oh, that's good. Very, very good. I'm giving this a solid... 7.5 out of 10, possibly an 8 by the time I'm done. Anyway, I'll catch you tomorrow. Well, it rained pretty much all day, so we did zero daytime herping today, but it's actually clearing up quite a bit for this evening, and I'm just getting out into the field. Harry and Stephen are already out cruising. I'm joining them just now, and here's a look over the environment here. Very typical Cameron Highlands landscape. These huge apartment developments amongst submontane forests. But without further ado, let's see if we can find some snakes. Yes! Yes, we got another one of the rare snakes. Guys, that's Hebius Enas, the Gunung Enas keelback. And man, it has been so many years since I've seen one of these. In fact, I've only seen three ever, all three here in the Cameron Highlands. Oh man, I, I, it must have just, I literally just walked up to where that sign was and turned around. It must have just come down off this edge. But goddamn, I'm so happy to see this. That means we found, in three nights here, we found two of the like seven or so rare snakes in this area, which is incredibly good going. And this is the first snake of the night. I'm hyped, boys. I'm freaking hyped. Okay, it's calmed down now and you can get a better look at this beauty. Um, not the most remarkable species, generally just of this dark grayish black body overall, with the, as you saw the very plain venter that's another way of telling apart from the other hebeus you can see it has the kind of hebeus checkered pattern on the body but it does fade as this species ages but what remains is those little uh, stripes behind the eye a very plain snake but uh you know we're not here to look for the flashiest things in the world we're here to look for the rare species and this is certainly what i'd consider one of the rare species of the highlands of malaysia and of course this species does occur in southern thailand but uh very 
I mean, it's 10 times rarer seen there than here, that's for sure. Only a couple records of it ever, or maybe only one, I'm not sure, but uh, really, really happy to see this tonight. I, I cannot understate to you guys, every time you begin a night of herping here, there's a good chance you'll get skunked. 99% of the time, you'll just find like a reed snake, a viper, a slug snake. Getting one of these species is really like, <laughs> it's, it's so uncommon here. What the hell, guys? I just stepped off the road to hike up this little swampy stream area and I saw a snake tail disappearing into the bushes, palmed it. A second Hebeus enas. I cannot believe this. This is a rare species and I just turned up two in a small area within a few minutes. This one you can see slightly smaller than the last one, but not really more patterned at all, actually. I, I thought it might have a bit stronger patterning. It doesn't whatsoever. I guess what it is, is uh, cooperating a bit better for me, is chilling out there. This is a crazy start for the night. I saw like the black snake tail and I was like, what the? I knew it was like, but it wasn't iridescent. So I knew it had to be some kind of keelback or something, but damn, what a start to my night. Um, the rain is holding off too, which is great. Um, I'm gonna put this one back because we already got one and uh, keep going, awesome. Well, here's the hebeus I just caught in my hand. I took a look around, boom third snake in quick succession tonight. This one you guys should be completely familiar with right now, by now. Oh, it's hiding its head. Perfect. But it is Asphena dipsas lascalinensis and a huge one at that. Really, really big individual, this one, stretched out here hunting around. And I also saw something else just after I noticed that over here. There's some kind of cool Phyllautus tree frog here. I'm not sure which one this is, Vermiculatus. Oh, he's gone. Anyway, I'm losing the snake up my sleeve, so. Yeah, that's boss. I just lost the freaking Hebeus up my sleeve. What the hell? Okay, I got the snake out of my sleeve and now back to this guy here who's uh, kind of flattening his head to look like more like a viper, I would guess. Um, you see it's making the back of its head very wide. And uh, this is a huge one. Absolutely no patterning at all on this individual. Oh, sorry, the Hebeus is climbing in front of the lens, but... Uh, yeah, really good signs. A snake party to start off this night and at a spot I've never checked out at night before. So definitely a great area by the looks of things. Here's a cool uh, dwarf atlas moth of some kind. Uh, this is not something you see that often. Certainly not as often as you see the true atlas moth. I've only seen these a couple of times, but uh, yeah, great to see that here. Really cool moth. All right, fourth snake of the night is this uh, juvenile Asphenodipsas. That's Galenensis, actually the first juvenile seen in a very long time. Although even at this size, it's already lost its banding. Juveniles of this species have actually quite distinct banding, but this one, almost none at all. Might as well be an adult, even though it's a fraction of the size of most of the ones we've been seeing already. If you look close, you can see some very faint traces of bands, but uh, yeah, another slug snake cruising about up here in the Cameron Highlands. I'm gonna let this one go straight away. All right, that uh, slug snake was the last snake of the night. Uh, I was so tired, I haven't quite recovered from my 30 plus hours of no sleep on the flight over. And it's still pouring with rain here, so we're gonna head off today and go somewhere else. But uh, yeah, it was amazing here, actually so good. It may not seem like it to you guys and the usual herping standards, but this many species and two rarities and three nights here, I would take that any time, really. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it a like, a comment, a thumbs up, and what? Subscribe? Say subscribe. Subscribe! Motherfucker.